taint means to become polluted. It means to become contaminated, corrupted, spoiled, right? So tainted excellence is operating in a false excellence due to demonic influence and impure motives. I'm going to repeat that again because I want y'all to catch that. Tainted excellence is operating in a false excellence due to demonic influence and impure motives. <clears throat> so we're going to take a look at a man named Simon in Acts 8, and we're going to read a lot of Bible tonight. We're going to read from uh, verses 9 to 24. Hmm. Tamika's messaging me um, on the side. She said it reminds me of the story of Hillsong Church. Okay, I'm not, I'm not going to quote him out, but I was watching watching that documentary this weekend, and it did they did come to mind when I was when I was uh, drafting this teaching. So, yeah, I highly recommend you all to watch that documentary. So good. So good. It, yes, it is. It is very eye opening. Extremely eye opening. Um, the scripture is Acts 8, verses 9 to 24. Okay. So verse 9 reads, a man named Simon had been a sorcerer there in Samaria for many years, amazing the people of Samaria and claiming to be someone great. So I'm pretty sure that we all know what a sorcerer is. Um, if you don't know, a sorcerer is pretty much someone who operates as a wizard, as a witch. Um, they believe they have magical powers, is very demonic, Harry Potter, those sort of things, right? Um, verse 10 says, everyone from the least to the greatest often spoke as Simon, as the great one, the power of God. They listened closely to him because for a long time, he had astounded them with his magic. So he was wooing a lot of people with his magic. But now the people believe Philip's message of the good news concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus. As a result, many men and women were baptized. So Philip was an um, evangelist. So he went from place to place preaching the gospel and sharing about Jesus. So verse 12 is saying that now the people believed Philip's message right? Verse 13 says, then the sorcerer, Simon, he himself believed the message and was baptized. And he began following P Philip wherever he went. And he was amazed by the signs and great miracles that Philip performed. Verse 14 says, when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that the people of Samaria had accepted God's message, they sent Peter and John there, who were, who were also apostles. As soon as they arrived, they prayed for the new believers to receive the Holy Spirit. So the gift of speaking in tongues, all of that. The Holy Spirit had not yet come upon any of them, for they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands upon the believers and they received the Holy Spirit. Verse 18 says, when Simon saw that the spirit was given when the apostles laid their hands on the people, he offered them money to buy this power. He said, let me have this power too, he exclaimed, so that when I lay my hands on people, they will also receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter replied, may your money be destroyed with you for thinking that God's gift can be bought. You can have no part of this for your heart is not right. Repent for your wickedness and pray to the Lord. Perhaps he will forgive you for your evil thoughts. Verse 23 said, for I can see that you are full of bitter jealousy and are held captive by sin. Pray to the Lord for me, Simon exclaimed, that these terrible things that you said won't happen to me. That was a lot, right? That was a lot of Bible. But we're going to break this down. We're going to break this down. So we see in this verse or this passage that Simon, he was a sorcerer. He was a wizard. You could tell from this that he wanted power, right? You could also see that he carried some element 
of excellence, right? Because in verse 10, it says, everyone from the least to the greatest often spoke of him as the great one, the power of God. And if you all remember, excellence is the quality of being outstanding or extremely good. So Simon, he was performing miracles. He was doing outstanding and amazing things, right? Which is all associated with carrying excellence. But when we look at it from a Christian Holy Ghost perspective, he wasn't operating in real excellence. It was a tainted version of it. It was a counterfeit version of excellence that activated in him due to partnering with the enemy instead of partnering with God, right? So like I mentioned earlier, excellence is within all of us, but how it expresses itself depends on who is it activated by. Is it activated by the Holy Spirit? Is it activated by God or is it activated by the enemy, right? The Bible mentions in Romans 11, 29, and I'm gonna read this in the Amplified Version. It says, for the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable, meaning he does not withdraw what he has given, nor does he change his mind about those who he gives his grace or whom he sends his call. What this verse is saying is that when God gives someone, when he gives someone a, a spiritual gift, he doesn't change his mind about it. Which is why I believe that God did give Simon the ability to perform miracles. That was his spiritual gift. But his spiritual gift, which is a display of the spirit of excellence, right? Our spiritual gifts are a display of the spirit of excellence working in us. His spiritual gift was tainted because he did not operate in partnership with God. He had selfish motives. He was prideful. He was a show off and he wanted recognition. Right, y'all following? If y'all following, say yes. If you want me to run it back, let me know because this is important. Okay, good. This is important. This is super important because God does not take away the spiritual gifts that he gives us. Being able to perform miracles, being able to teach, to prophesy, to heal the sick, all those things, those are spiritual gifts. But if you're not operating in partnership with the Holy Ghost, if you're not in, operating in partnership with the Lord and you're able to do those things, you're partnering with the enemy. This is what Simon was doing. So how many of us have seen people get really far, really succeed in their businesses, but they were going about it the wrong way? I know we have all seen that before. There are tons of companies out there that have done pyramid schemes, Ponzi schemes, all the type of schemes, scams, all the things, but they were able to get ahead. They were able to get ahead because in essence, or not in essence, they carried a, a tainted version of excellence. That's why they were able to get ahead. But when you operate in a tainted version of excellence, you feel that you have power or that you're untouchable forever, but ultimately you will have a downfall like Simon did. Because what you see at the towards the end of the chapter, Peter exposed him and rebuked him. Peter said, may you may your money be destroyed with you for thinking that God's gift can be brought. He rebuked him. So it was at that moment where P Peter realized like, I mean, um, Simon realized like, okay, this is not the mindset that I should have. He said, pray to the Lord for me that these terrible things that you said won't happen to me. It was at that moment that he caught, okay, I messed up. <laughs> he realized at that moment, I messed up. Bianca said, this is why the spirit of comparison is so dangerous out here comparing ourselves to demonic activity. Come on, you better teach us. We out here comparing ourselves to demonic activity. We don't know the spirit behind certain people, certain people on, on big platforms. They have all these followings, but we don't know the spirit that's operating behind them. We see different business owners and we want to be, be similar to them, want to have the same success as them, but we don't know what spirit is operating in them. That's why it's so important to be pure and keep our hearts 
focused on God as kingdom CEOs. We cannot operate in tainted excellence because there are people that are attached to our assignment. And if we operate in tainted excellence, we are tainting them. And then we're going to have to answer to God for that. So it's super important. If we don't learn anything from tonight, it's, it's important that we know that we can't be like Simon. We can't operate in tainted excellence. We can't. So although people spoke of Simon as the great one, the power of God, we see that in what verse is it? Hold on, because I like to I like to give y'all the facts. Where is that? Where is that? Where is that? Where is that? Verse 10, Acts 8, verse 10. People were calling him the power of God, the great one. He was not as great as he could have been if he was in partnership with God. That's the major key. When you see people elevating and doing all the things, getting all the glitz and the glamour, they're doing great, seemingly, right? Seemingly, because we don't know what's what's going on behind closed doors, but when they're partnering with the enemy, they're not doing that great. It's not as great as they as it could have been if they partnered with God. Because when you partner with God, God takes you to your true pinnacle. The, the enemy will take you to a counterfeit pinnacle. You would think that you've reached the top, but you really haven't. The grass is not always greener. Come on. It's not always greener. We also learn from this passage with Simon that accepting Jesus doesn't automatically stop you from being tainted or cleanse you from pollution, right? Because it said that Simon was baptized. It said that he became a follower. It said in verse 13 that Simon himself believed and was baptized. He began following P Philip wherever he went, and he was amazed by the signs and great miracles that Philip performed. So Simon, he accepted and believed. And what's crazy is that he was surrounded and involved in a community of believers who operated in the spirit of excellence, right? Uh, Philip operated in the spirit of excellence. Peter operated in the spirit of excellence. John operated in the spirit of excellence, but still Peter was tainted. So being around the right people doesn't automatically save you. Being connected to the right people does not automatically save you. They can encourage you, right? But it's up to you to do the work. You have to do the work. You have to check your heart. You have to check your motives. Are your motives pure? Is my motives for walking or wanting to walk in excellence and to be connected to certain people, are they pure? Ask yourself these questions. Is my motives for my business pure? Am I all about money or am I about it or am I about kingdom? The Lord had to chuck me on that. When I first started my business, it was all about money. I was working at a nine, a nine to five that I hated. And I saw people on YouTube, all these influencers making multiple figures a month. And I was like, I, was like, I wanna do that. I wanna be my own boss. I, I wanna make money. I was so caught up with getting clients. I wasn't focused on kingdom. That's not operating in a spirit of excellence. That's operating in a spirit of greed. And God had to check me on that. And then I was wondering why weren't things happening with my business? It was because my motives was wrong. I can't have one foot in the world and one foot with God and expect my business to take off. I had to be realigned. I had to be realigned. So we have to ask ourselves these questions. Is our motives pure? Not only for business, but just in general. Do I have a pure heart? <clears throat> Are my motives pure? And my prayer is that even if you feel that your motives are pure and they're not, that the Holy Spirit will start to convict you and start to reveal things to you. Because when you're walking in excellence, you're also walking in freedom, breakthrough, deliverance, right? When you're tainted, you need deliverance. When your excellence is tainted, you need deliverance. To be a kingdom CD, CEO, you need deliverance. So allow God to reveal the things to you, reveal the, the matters of the heart that are not pure. 
The next thing that we learn from Simon is that you cannot buy excellence at all. You cannot buy it. And this reminds me of people who go to see fortune tellers, psychics, they do different rituals in order to get ahead. You cannot buy those things. It's counterfeit. I guarantee you it's counterfeit. These are all co it's counterfeit. It might seem like you're getting ahead, but you're not. And I want to encourage you, if that has ever been you, to repent and ask God to help you to help you see that he's already giving you the spirit of excellence and to activate that spirit of excellence in you. In verse 18, we see, when Simon saw the spirit was given, when the apostles laid hands on people, he offered them money to buy this power. He said, let me have this power too, so that when I lay my hands on people, they will receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter replied, may your money be destroyed with you for thinking God's gift can be bought. We talked about this earlier, but I want to remind you that operating in your spiritual gifts in partnership with the Holy Spirit is walking in excellence. What the apostles were doing when they laid hands on people and they received the Holy Spirit, that was them operating in their spiritual gifts. And Simon thought that he could buy this excellence. He thought that he could buy spiritual gifts. I was reading this. I'm like, make it make sense. He really thought that you could buy a spiritual God-given gift, <laughs> right? So although Simon believed in Jesus, he was baptized, he still had the heart and the mindset of a sorcerer. Because sorcerers, they believe that you can buy spiritual gifts. They believe that you can buy power. Come on, it's the audacity for me too, Tamika. He wanted power more than anything else. He didn't care about how the apostles were changing lives with the gospel. He just wanted power. He wanted to be able to perform greater magic and woo more people. That was it. He didn't care about kingdom. Simon did not care about kingdom. And when we are kingdom CEOs, we seek the kingdom first. We don't seek power first. We seek the kingdom first. And then God will allow us to have influence. He will allow us to dominate. He will allow us to walk in excellence so that we wouldn't be power hungry because the spirit of God is working in us and navigating things for us. But when power, winning power is our main motive, that will be our downfall. That will be our downfall. It's not about wooing people. It's not about outperforming other people. It's about kingdom. It's about fulfilling your assignment through your business, whatever that is. So Peter said to Simon, he said, I can see that you're full of jealousy. You're full of bitter jealousy and you're held captive by sin. Hmm. So what I got from this is jealousy, bitterness, wrong motives, seeking power and sin are open doors to tainted excellence. All of this is open doors to tainted excellence. But having a pure heart allows you to operate in true excellence in partnership with the Holy Spirit. It allows you to have a kingdom mindset when you have a pure heart. So we got to see kingdom first. We have to seek kingdom first. Matthew 6, 33 says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all, all these things shall be added unto you. If you read Matthew 6 and you see all the things that were mentioned before, before uh, verse 33, you'll, you'll find that everything you need provision, provision to fulfill your assignment, 
all those things will be added to you. Be, you'll be given everything you need to fulfill your assignment if you seek the kingdom first, if you seek God first, if kingdom is your priority. But we have to seek it first. We have to truly seek God, not what he can give us, but truly seek God. Simon was seeking after what God could give him, not a true relationship. He wasn't seeking kingdom. Daniel said his motives led him to do what appeared to be right, but his heart was still exposed. Yep. 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 So I want to leave y'all with these four points. And I already stressed the first one, which is seek God, right? Seek God is the first one. The second one is ask God to make your motives pure, not just for business, but for relationships, your life, everything that is attached to you to make it pure. Let your motives be pure with everything that you do, because when you're not pure, that is a, a open door for the enemy to infiltrate because he likes filth. <laughs> the enemy likes filth. He's attracted to filth. So keep yourself pure. Ask the, ask the Holy Spirit to keep you pure and to make your motives pure. The, th the third point is ask God to give you a kingdom mindset. Think about kingdom first. For, we, for me and my business, instead of focusing on money, the Lord told me, I really just want you to help people. I want you to focus on helping people get healthy as a dietitian. That's what I've called you to do, to make nutrition easy to understand for people that think it's overcomplicated. Help people. Your business, like Bianca mentions multiple times, your business is a solution to someone's problem. You're supposed to help people with your business. Have that kingdom mindset to serve people, to help people. And the fourth point I want to mention is if you do all these things, if you seek God, if you ask him to make your motives pure, if you ask God to give you a kingdom mindset, if you do all these things, then you will have everything you need. You'll have everything you need for your business. You won't have to cheat people to get ahead. You won't have to lie and steal. You won't have to wear crystals. You won't have to go to a psychic or a fortune teller. You won't have to do any of these things because all these things actually are opening you up to, to demons and tainted excellence. But if you seek God, burn sage, yes. Yes, Tamika. But if you seek God, you'll have everything you need. Amen. So I'm gonna leave y'all with some homework. And um, we're gonna talk about this in the chat and also next week when we come back. But I want you all to read Matthew 6, 25, 25 to 34. So read Matthew 6, 25 to 34. And I want y'all to ask God to reveal to you how does seeking the kingdom first aligns with walking in the spirit of excellence? Because at this point, we've been talking about excellence so much. You should have a, a, a deep understanding of what excellence is, the spirit of excellence is. So when you read that, ask the Lord to reveal how does seeking the kingdom first aligns with walking in excellence, right? So I'm gonna leave you all with that. I hope this blessed you like it blessed me. And let's not let our excellence get tainted. Let's seek God, keep the kingdom first, ask God for a kingdom mindset, and then we'll have everything we need. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Come on with that word. Come on with that word, tainted excellence. Let me tell you why this is so important. And I feel like Sharita was reading my notes for the mentorship program. Um, that's being released very soon, y'all. But the Lord has literally been dropping revelation concerning uh, what the end times look like concerning kingdom CEOs and how do we really put ourselves in the position to be all that God is calling us to be in this season. And the reason why tainted excellence is so important for us to focus on is because we have to remember um, that people are looking for results, all right? People are looking for results. If you see around the world of all of these things that are happening, a lot of it stems from people seeking out results of some form or fashion. And what's going to happen with Kingdom CEOs is that we're going to be in a position to provide 
the results that people need, right? Um, it's one of the reasons why a lot of people um, go to different measures. So actually, Rita was talking about uh, crystal, sage, you know, fortune tellers, horoscopes, um, you know, whoever, whatever, to, to get guidance because people are looking for results. And so the fact of the matter is that when we look at Matthew 4, the devil literally told Jesus in the wilderness, like, if you bow down to me, I'm going to give you all of these kingdoms. I'm going to give you all of their glory, right? He took him to the very high mountain, the Bible says. And so this is why we can't look at what other people have. And I pray that even today, you know, as she released this word, that it breaks the head of the spirit of comparison that we so all fall victim to at times concerning seeing people on social media. As amazing as social media is, it's like we, social media has become this space of validity for everyone. So we see people's lives, we see their businesses, we see their money, we see what they expose, right? But the Bible says he took him to a very high mountain, right? That's where some positions of some people are. They're on very high mountains. And he said, if, if you bow down and worship me, I'll give you all of this, right? I'll give you all of this. Exactly, Siobhan, it already belongs to him, right? I get, I'll give you all of this. I'll give you the money. I'll give you the riches. I'll give you the fame. I'll give you all of this if you bow down and worship me. And a lot of people have compromised what God has given them just so that they can get to levels. Um, and like Siobhan said, that they already have, you know what I mean? Compromising levels that they already have. And so he said, bow down. And of course, Jesus responded with the word, but it's because people are looking for results. The enemy knows that people are, they will literally do anything for results. I was watching this video on Instagram today and a young man, he has, I don't even know what country it was in. I'm not sure if it was the U.S., but he's breaking into people's homes and like doing videos on it. And he broke into somebody's home and I believe he got caught by the police. They were arresting him in the video. And when he did an, another video after he was arrested, he said, I know that this is the easiest way for me to get fame. I know that this is the easiest way for me to go viral. He said, I don't recommend other people doing it, but I know that I'm gonna get viral by doing this. People are literally looking for the results of fame. They're looking for the results of clout. They're looking for the very high mountain. They're looking for them receiving all of the kingdom, but they're doing it the wrong way. And so when we see the results, quote unquote, that they get, we sometimes put our place, put ourselves in a place of comparison. And you don't know what people do to get the things that they get. You don't know what they had to sacrifice to attain the wealth, the fame, the clout, like you don't know. And so we sometimes sit back and we look on these media pages and we're like, oh my God, I want to be like so-and-so, or I want to have as much money as so-and-so. And we don't know that they had this very conversation with the enemy and said, yes, that the enemy approached them the same way he did Jesus and said, if you bow down to me, I'll give you all of these kingdoms and all of this glory, I'll take you to the highest mountain. And they said, cool, no problem. And that exchange took place and they were given this level of fame and clout and wealth. And here we are from our vantage point saying, wow, I'm marveling at the result, but I'm not understanding that even after in the wilderness, what Jesus had to endure after he told the devil, no, he had to carry first. And what the Lord said to me as Sharita was speaking, she said, some of, I mean, the Lord said, some of us want babies without being carriers. Some of us want babies without being carriers. You cannot have a baby without carrying it. I mean, of course, in this day and age, there's a lot of things that can happen, right? But you cannot have a baby without being a carrier. And so, what Jesus did after he left that wilderness place was carry something so that that thing can be full term, so that thing can have no premature situations, so that thing cannot malfunction or be in a state of dysfunction because he understood that I had to carry in order to birth. When we try to birth without carrying, 
we're literally operating illegally. And so what the Lord was showing me was that when people accept the fame before the process or the wealth before the process, we are in a space of prematurity and immaturity that causes complications. Anybody that knows, usually when you have a premature baby, that baby is more susceptible to complications than one that goes full term. Why? Because a full term baby gets all that they need to actually be processed into the birthing process, right? The complications lower. And so if we want to make sure that our businesses as kingdom CEOs are in a space where there is enough nutrients to keep our babies through the process. There's enough nutrients that when we birth, there's no complications. We got to make sure that we're operating from a place of maturity. And what does maturity look like? Maturity takes place when we endure the process, all right? When we endure the process. And so he said, you got to carry first. You got to carry first. The reason why, I mean, obviously Jesus said no to the enemy because he wasn't going to get it through those means, but he also knew that he was here for a mission. Like he had to, he had to endure that thing because he was already getting the kingdoms. The kingdoms already belonged to his dad, but he endured a thing and got it the right way. And I believe that what the Lord is doing for us tonight is reminding us that I want to give you all that I've promised. Like I want to release that to you. But I want you to also do this the right way so that you are not you are you're not stepping into a place of prematurity and immaturity concerning the promises of God. Exactly, Danny, how you carry matters, how you carry matters. It is it's essential that we are walking this thing out. We're walking this thing out. It's essential that we are walking this thing out. And so carriers have a responsibility to go full term. We have a responsibility to go full term as kingdom CEOs. We have a responsibility to go full term so that our babies are released into the earth realm with everything that it needs. And so tonight was a reminder for us. Thank you so much, Sharita, for this word, because I'm telling you, it's so in line with what God is releasing in the earth realm for this time concerning kingdom CEOs. We are not the same. And what I want us to stop doing is co um, committing ourselves to comparison connecting ourselves to the spirit of comparison that says, I want to be like, you know, this other person that I see prospering because we don't know what they neglected to get where they are. We don't know what contracts they entered into to get where they are. We don't know what they signed to make sure that they got the riches of the world without carriers. We don't know if they skipped the process and actually birthed without being carriers. The Lord said, kingdom CEOs, I need you to carry. I need you to carry. I need you to carry. I, he, he was in the wilderness. He was in a space of vulnerability. The enemy came to him and tempted him with a high, a high place, kingdoms. And his answer was no. Why? Because he had to carry. Somebody type in the chat, I have to carry. I have to carry. It's essential for us to carry. And as kingdom CEOs, we do not have the luxury to skip the process and birth because we have to carry and carry full term. And so I even declare over our lives, even as we're going to shift into prayer, I declare over our lives that we do not carry. I mean, we do not uh, a birth without carrying. We don't skip the, the carrying process. We don't skip that. We carry and then we birth. We carry and then we birth because we will not be like the world where either one we get the birth without carrying and then that thing is taken away because it did not have the proper nutrients to sustain or to continue. This is why you see, they say, uh, I forgot the percentage of the amount of people that win the lottery just out the blue like that with no processing and they blow it. Why? Because you didn't have what it took to maintain what you just received. And God is saying, my kingdom CEOs, they're not going to be like that. They're not going to be in a position where I give them something and then they can't sustain it because they don't have the character to hold on. They are not carrying the things that I've put on the inside of them. They want the baby without carrying. The Lord said, you have to carry. You have to carry. And so Jesus had to hit him with the word because that word took him out of the microwave process and it put him in the oven. Some of us need to learn how to bake a little bit more. 
Some of us need to learn how to sit a little bit more. Why? Because that thing is going to cause the places that didn't get touched to get touched in us because it is a slower process. It's more in, in tune. It's more, it's more of a, a, a detailed process. I don't know how many times I don't put food in the microwave in certain places it's still cold because it wasn't meant for that. It wasn't meant to go into the deep places. I remember watching something that said, in order for you to get like your food evenly warmed, you got to put a hole in the middle. You got to, it's all of these steps because it wasn't made to touch every part of your plate. It just, it, it's not concentrated. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It, it's not a concentrated process. But when you put something in the oven, the oven is a concentrated heat that causes it to seep into places. And what the Lord is saying in this season and in this hour, I want the kingdom CEOs that's willing to sit in the oven so that I can go into the, the places, the places that you don't talk about, the places that nobody knows about, the places that haven't been, been, been catered to or haven't been addressed because it's concentrated. Come on, every area, that's it. So if you sit in this thing, if you learn how to carry this thing out, I'm going to show you that it's not going to be a microwave process. Yeah, I get it. I know that you want this right now. I know that you've been waiting. You've been praying. You've been, um, there's a word that God gave me this morning in my devotional time. And he said, the weight, W-A-I-T, that forges patience. And the weight, W-E-I-G-H-T, that forges posture. And so what the Lord said is that my W-A-I-T is going to forge patience out of you. And we need the patience to endure. And my W-E-I-G-H-T is going to forge posture. So I need you to stand still and stand straight. I need you to stand still and stand straight. And those instructions for me this morning was like, all right, God, I heard you. I heard you. I need you to stand still and stand straight because what I'm about to do concerning your life and concerning your business is going to require a certain level of endurance and a certain posture. Stand still and stand straight that I don't have the, 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 and, and I like using this statement only because it is literally the right of a kingdom CEO for us to access things from an excellent level. So I don't have the luxury to stand down too long. I don't have the luxury of standing down too long, right? Stand still, stand straight. I want you guys to be carriers, says the Lord. I want you guys to understand that you got to carry first. You got to carry first. And don't desire the babies without being carriers. I ain't never been pregnant before, but I could imagine based off of stories that I've heard from my friends and my cousins and my sisters, that the level of discomfort is real. And it gets even realer as time goes by. I can't tell you the amount of times I've had conversations with my friends and towards the end of them carrying, it's like, yo, get this baby out of here. I need it out. I need it out. And so they're doing all sorts of things, walking on the sideway and the curb and all of that stuff to make sure that that thing comes down, right? That their stomach drops so that the baby starts to move down. We have to learn how to carry even in the midst of discomfort. And I know a lot of us are in a space of feeling the levels of discomfort concerning carrying. But if we don't want our excellence to be tainted, as Sharita just released, if we don't want to step into a place of tainted uh, uh, excellence, we have to learn how to partner with the Holy Spirit. We got to learn how to partner with God. We got to learn how to partner with God concerning this excellent place that he's calling us to. But carrying into birth is how we're going to get there. And so we're going to pray. We're going to pray. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank the Lord even for tonight. We thank the Lord for what he has just released in our midst. We thank the Lord for his, his excellence and his precision and how he is perfect in all of his ways. Thank you, Father. We just honor you in this moment. We take some time to honor you as daughters. We take some time, oh God, to acknowledge you, Father. Acknowledge your presence. Acknowledge who you are. Acknowledge what you're doing. 
Thank you, Lord, for every person that's here on this Zoom. I declare over our lives that we would never be the same, oh God, that this word will permeate our very being, that our soul will be altered concerning this word, oh God, that we will grab hold to it, that our spirit man will be strengthened, oh God. I pray, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, for every person who may be feeling like fainting in this time. I declare, oh God, that your supernatural strength will begin to fill our physical bodies, will begin to fill our spirit, man, that we will get muscles in the spirit and muscles, oh God, that will continue, cause us to continue to endure, that we would not get tired and weary and well-doing, but we will pursue and persist until we possess. I declare, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, that you would give us the tenacity to continue. You would give us, oh God, a new breath, a fresh wind, to push us into places we thought we couldn't go. Father, every person that has been uh, uh, feeling dormant and feeling like they've been sleepy in their calling, I wake them up, oh God, in the spirit and I call them forth in the name of Jesus. And I declare that everything, oh God, that has to come into order and alignment concerning their purpose will do so now at the sound of my voice. I declare, Lord God, that as you are lining things up concerning what you're calling us to, Father, that we would not miss another season, that we would not be asleep, oh God. I come against the spirit of slumber that had hold of us in the past season. Father, I declare that just as you sent your disciples to tell the man to take up his bed and walk, I declare over us tonight that because of your word, we are shaken up. Because of your word, we will take up our beds and walk. We will not go back to the place of slumber again. We will not go back to a place of dormancy again. I declare over our lives, oh God, that we will never, ever, ever be the same again, oh Oh God, Father, let tainted excellence not be our portion in this season, oh God. Let tainted excellence not be something that we give ourselves over to because we want things fast and we don't want it full. I declare that this is a season of full and not fast only, oh God. Even if you are accelerating, I pray that there will be a full process, that you will take us, oh God, through the process so that we will get everything that we need to traverse the things that you are calling us into. Father, help us to navigate well that we would navigate from a place of wisdom. We would navigate from a place of understanding. We would navigate, oh God, from a place of knowledge that you, oh God, who has called us to this work, you have equipped us so that we can finish well. I declare that we will stand still and stand straight. I declare, oh God, that our backs, oh God, will stand up in the midst of adversity. Every person that is facing a storm or facing adversity, I declare that you will teach us how to stand. I thank you, Lord God, that you have straightened our backs for such a time as this, to stand as kingdom CEOs and declare the glory of the Lord through our businesses. I pray, Lord God, that as you push us forward, that as you continue to push us into the deep, that Lord God, that we will stand as the ones that you have called. Lord God, even as you have called Esther to go into the king's palace and to to sway his decision making. I pray, Lord God, that you will send us, oh God, into the places that you've called us uh, to sway the decision making of the enemy. I pray, Lord God, that we will be effective in all that we do, that the spirit of excellence will be upon us in all that we do and say, oh God, that there will be a shift in the way we operate our businesses. There will be a shift in the way of how we speak to people. There will be a shift in the way how we handle customers and clients, that you will shift us into excellence that we will get excellent about our money, oh God. We will get excellence, oh God, about our operations. We will get excellence about our foundational truths, oh God. We will be excellent concerning our mission and our vision that we will not lose sight because of patience. We will not lose sight because of a lack of knowing how to wait. Teach us how to wait, oh God. Teach us how to wait on you and teach us how to hold the weight. Father, teach us how to straighten our backs so that the weight will not be too much, that we will not crumble, we will not fall, but we will have the understanding and know that you are holding us up in this season. I come against every anti-progressive spirit that was sent from the enemy to stop us from moving forward. I release the feet of your daughters. I declare that our feet will not be twisted, that we will not walk on crooked paths because you make all crooked 
crooked paths straight. And so we declare over our lives today that our paths are not crooked, that the Holy Spirit will be our GPS, that we will follow the instructions and begin to move into the promise, oh God. I pray over every ear, that our ears will hear the instruction and direction of the Lord, that there will be no hindrance concerning what we hear. I speak over our eyes, oh God, that we will see like never before, that Lord, you would raise up those who desire to see with the eyes of our hearts and not see with our physical eyes. Father, we put our soulish ways under subjection, that when our emotions begin to rise up, that we will learn how to put it under subjection, that we don't have to kick it out of the car, but it would not be a driver in how we decide. I declare, oh God, that even when our emotions speak, we will not let it have the last say. I pray, Lord God, that your word would be our butler. Your word, oh God, will be the one that serves us. Your word, oh God, will be the very thing that we eat from. That we will sit at the king's table. You, the king, not the king of the world, but you, the king of all kings and feast, oh God. I declare, Father, that there will be a clear shift, a shift from mediocrity into excellence, a shift from the safe place into the face of the deep, a shift, oh God, from our comfort zone into a place of risk. I declare over every person today that we will not allow fear and hesitation and paralysis to continue to hold us back from doing what you called us to do. Father, we break the head of that serpent now in Jesus' name, that we hit that thing on the head so that we deal with it accordingly and that we move into all that you're calling us into, oh God. Father, shift us into the next level. Bring us into places that our eyes could not even see or, or our ears could even hear. Father, oh God, above and beyond our expectations, I pray that you will continuously bring us to your levels through the process that we will learn how to be carriers. Lord, teach us how to be carriers. Teach us how to be carriers. Even when it hurts, even when it's uncomfortable, even when the pain gets great, Teach us how to carry well. Teach us how to carry well. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Thank you, holy God. Thank you, holy God. Thank you, holy God. Thank you, holy God. As I was praying, the Lord was showing me a vision of a pregnant woman. And he showed me her feet very swollen. And what the Lord said to me was that even in the midst of things changing in her body, even in the midst of things being alternate, right? It's not regular. She still has a responsibility to carry. Even while all of that is shifting, she doesn't even have the ability to eject the baby before it's time. Even while, my God, and this is ministering to me because we got to activate the even while in our spirit. It's the even while. It's the even while. Even while things may seem haywire, even while things may not seem like it's lining up quickly, I still have a responsibility to carry. I still have a responsibility to bring this thing into its end. I still have a responsibility to carry well, even while. Even while what's going on in my house seems crazy, even while I still have a responsibility, even while my body may not be responding the way that it should, even while I still have a responsibility to carry that the woman who's experiencing this, this heaviness, the woman who's experiencing these pains, discomfort, she still has a responsibility. And I think what happens is that we get too comfortable with putting it down. We get too comfortable with putting it down. I'm telling y'all because I'm speaking from a place of vulnerability that the Lord had to yoke me up through the people around me concerning my call. And I'm telling you, it's so easy for some of us to put it down. Like I'm not doing this anymore. I'm good on this. Because my feet are a little swollen while I'm carrying because I'm feeling the pain. I'm feeling like I, I'm, I'm feeling the discomfort. I'm feeling my belly stretching. It's too uncomfortable. I might get stretch marks after this and I don't want to deal with that. It's too uncomfortable. 
My nose might stretch out a little bit and I don't really want to look like that. It's too uncomfortable. But I still have a responsibility. When you understand a true carrier and the nature of someone who is actually carrying, they cannot release themselves from the responsibility of carrying. They have to go all the way. Somebody type that in the chat. I have to go all the way. My pastor preached on Sunday a sermon called going all the way in or going all in. And it's reminding me of that. Even though it was more so talking about being emerged or immersed all the way inside of, of, of something that God is calling you to. But it's, it's, it's the same concept. It's like, I, I have to go all the way. Like who told you that you can get the baby out before it's time? Who told you that? Who told you that you have the ability to release this thing before it actually crowns? Who told you that? Who told you that? I need my baby to crown. I, Jesus, my God, I need my baby to crown. I need the doctors to see the head. I need, I need evidence of this thing ready to come out. And the Lord is like, if you just hold on, I'm going to show you the evidence. I'm going to show you that this thing is coming. I'm going to show you that you don't have to wait that much longer. But if you hold it out, I'm telling you, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. It's like a clarion call for us tonight to hold on because there's something crowning. There is something crowning. I'm seeing the hairs of the baby. It's something crowning. It ain't all the way out and it ain't done yet, but there's something crowning. But I need you to carry, carry, carry carry. I say carry, carry. We have a responsibility to carry well. We cannot forfeit the process because it's too uncomfortable. We have a responsibility. Bianca, you have a responsibility to carry. It just because it gets uncomfortable, just because the pain gets a little weighty, you don't have the luxury of letting the baby out before you carry. You got to carry. Because guess what? If the baby leaves the environment that God placed it in for full term, I can kill it. I can kill it. If I take the baby out of its environment too quick, the environment that gives it all that it needs, the nutrients, the things that, that, that it uses to sustain, I can kill it. Do you understand that we have the ability to kill our babies if we take them out of the environment that God has them in right now, that environment of process, that environment of, of, of circumcision, that environment of deliverance and healing, I can kill that thing? This is why when a, a premature baby comes out into the world, what do they have to do? Hook them up to so many things because I have to mimic what it was getting in the womb. Jesus. I have to mimic what that baby was getting in the womb. So I had to hook up the air and the and, and this and that and IVs and all of these things because I have to mimic. Now we have to make a makeshift environment for the baby because we removed it too quickly out of the environment that it needed to survive. God is saying the environment that I need your baby to survive is one that is not going to be comfortable. It's one that's going to give it all that it needs. It's going to be uncomfortable. It's going to feel like things are just breaking loose. But I need you to understand that this is the environment that it needs. This is the environment that it needs. Come on, the incubation, that's it. This is the environment that it needs. Yes, Sharita, the heavier the weight becomes, the closer you are to birthing. This is the environment that it needs. Do you understand that this is the environment that your baby needs, that your business needs? Your brand needs this. Your brand needs to be pushed around a little bit. It needs it. Your business needs, needs to be kicked around a little bit. A little slap here and there. Why? Because that thing is fortifying something in us. You ain't talking the same no more. I was talking to Sharita this morning about a situation and one of the things that we spoke about was the fact that when we endure these things and we enter into this new level, everything has to elevate. Everything has to elevate. Our mindset, the way people view us, the way people value us, the way you value yourself, everything has to elevate because I paid something for this. I paid something for this. Do you know how expensive your oil is? Like, do we really know that? Do we really know how expensive our anointing is? So that when our business gets to this place of fruition, it's like, yeah, I've been bankrupt before. 
Yeah, I had to, I had to, 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 to go negative in my account before. I had to make some investments that hurt me a little bit. I had to deal with, I did a reel today about partnerships. I had to deal with bad experiences and partnerships that tried to crush me. I had to deal with that. I paid a price for this thing. I paid a price for this thing. So when we talk about Jesus going to the cross in true excellence, that man could say, I paid the ultimate price for this thing. I didn't take the shortcut. I didn't just say yes to the kingdoms and the glory. I paid a price for this. I paid a price for this. Come on, Nadia. You paid a price. It's big, naughty, not the little one. You paid a price. You paid a price. And nobody can't take that away from you. So our responsibility is to carry. It's to carry. It's to carry. And I'm going to stop here because I'm going to keep going. Come on. Come on. I paid a price for this. All of the nights that I cried, you don't think that that was watering something? All of the nights that you cried about something, you don't think that those tears were watering your grounds? All of those nights you were crying out to God. Come on, Ashley, sleepless nights. You paid a price for this. When I left my corporate job and there were days, I tell you guys this testimony all the time, where I'm literally crying out to God, like, God, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to move. I don't know which way to go. Then having to delve into self-investment, the books that I've read, the degrees that I've gotten, the mentors that I've sat under, you paid a price for this thing. You paid a price for it. The research that you've done, you've paid a price. Come on, come on, Shan. That's it, that's it. Come on, come on, Nikki, Arianne, let's go. Kat, let's go. You paid a price, you paid a price. We do not want our excellence to be tainted because we don't have the ability to wait or carry the weight. Do not get caught up with the hype. Don't get caught up with the hype. I'm telling you, this shift that's taking place with kingdom CEOs in this season, we got a different understanding. It's a different understanding. It hits differently. It's a different understanding because we're not worried about making the millions right now and, 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 and stepping into these places of high wealth and fame without understanding that I need to be the person that God needs me to be. I need to be that kingdom CEO, that woman of God, that God is calling me to be in this season before I even attain. Like I need the process. I need to know what this thing really, really looks like so that I don't give up. So that I don't give up. I'm gonna read this one last thing and we're gonna end here. But in my devotions this morning, I was reading Romans 8, actually one of my favorite chapters, but it's talking about life through the spirit. And this goes definitely in line with what Sharita released today concerning tainted excellence. And it's talking about the difference between those who live in the spirit and those who live in their flesh. And starting from verse five, it says, those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the spirit have their minds set on what the spirit desires. The mind that is governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's Lord, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the spirit gives you life because of righteousness. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. I'm going to skip down for if you live according to the flesh, sorry, therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it is not to the flesh to live according to it. So if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. 
And so we know that he's talking about here, spiritual deaths, right? Literally, when we crave the things that the world has to offer, we put ourselves at risk. But if we submit ourselves over to Holy Spirit and we say, God, I want to do this your way. I don't know what this thing is going to look like. I promise y'all my prayers be different lately. God, I don't have an idea of what this thing is supposed to look like because I know that you laugh at my plans. But I want to do this your way. So even if your direction comes day by day, I got to do this your way. Because I don't want to experience a spiritual death or experience death to the baby that you put on the inside of me. And we're going to end right there. Period, poo. Amen. Thank you so much, Sharita, for that word. I promise you, I always say that I'm not going to um, speak after you speak because you be putting the fire up under me. And then we be giving the people two sermons. So, <laughs> but thank you so much um, for that word. Um, Deshaun, I know you had your hand up. Go ahead, release. Release, prophetess. Come on. It's so funny. I put my hand back down because I said no. But what I will say is that as you were talking about this and you were talking about caring, God took me back to my place. I mean, I took, took me back to a place with all my pregnancies. I have four children, y'all. And each pregnancy was different. And, I, you know, I know there are some women that experience pregnancy that they love being pregnant. But, you know, each time me carrying it was very uncomfortable for me. With my first daughter, I was sick the whole pretty much pregnancy up into seven months, where instead of me gaining weight, I was losing weight. So I didn't get a chance to really experience, you know, my a good pregnancy. My body, I felt like my body was rejecting what I was supposed to bring forth. I was in my bedroom for the whole seven months because I couldn't hold nothing down. So everybody was talking about, you know, how they love the food and they love this, this, and that. I had to carry around a spit cup. So I looked at disgusting. I felt disgusting. I couldn't keep nothing down. Um, and it was just, you know what I mean? It was an experience that I had to endure to bring forth something great that I couldn't understand because it was very uncomfortable for me. And I remember throughout the process, because it was so uncomfortable, every time I went to the doctors, I began to try to do different things to manipulate her coming forth earlier, my first child. So I remember me getting close to, to um, you know, my due date. They said, well, we could do something by scratching, uh, scraping the membranes. And in doing that, because you already are dilated some, some, it should induce you into some labor. Because my cousin told me about it. So then I asked the doctor about it. And they did. And then my water ended up breaking um, the next day. And then with my son, with him, I went through a lot of mental stress where I thought I was going to lose my mind. And even throughout that process with him, at this point, I was going to church. So God was telling me who he was. But the mental capacity of me carrying him, I literally would pass out because it was just, it was so great. And with him, I remember it. It, it got so big, like Sharita said, as I got bigger, the weight got so much. I remember me being on a phone with his father and I said, I can guarantee that if I bend over and pick up this pen, my water is going to break because that's how much pressure I felt towards going towards the end of the pregnancy. But I was, I wasn't, I wasn't that close to the end, but that's how bad the pressure was. And he was like, stop playing. And I literally bent over and pick up the pen and my water gushed. And started and broke and I couldn't believe it. Then now let's fast forward. Now me and my husband are married. And because the way my other pregnancies went and my water broke and I was able to manipulate things, I was able to bend and stretch and things and my water broke with my two daughters. Um, you know what I mean? Again, I'm going through it. Um, with my other daughter, I, I just, I, I was so heavy. I gained so much weight. I never been this heavy in my life. It was very uncomfortable. Um, so I was trying to do different things to manipulate the birth to come forward, but I had to wait it out and she ended up, you know, I had to end up being induced. And that was so uncomfortable because I'm like, why can't y'all scrape the membranes? Why can't I bend over and my water break? Like no matter what I did, like my other pregnancies, it was like, nope. She's not coming out. She's not coming out to the point they had to induce and take her out. Then with my last child, which was so funny, I didn't want to be on birth control anymore. 
So I thought, I told my husband, I said, the Bible says if two people agree, if we're on one accord, then God will listen to us and I won't get pregnant. I got pregnant the next week because at the end of the day, God is not a man that he shall lie. And he already commanded us before, before, you know what I mean? And in Genesis to be fruitful and multiply. And here I am because I'm so used to manipulating the birth of things and my pregnancy and how I thought I was going to tell God, you know what I mean? That I, I wanted something different and I can go out and do this, this and that. And it wasn't going to happen. And God was like, I laugh and I laugh. I got pregnant so fast. And through that pregnancy, that was crazy. Cause I didn't even get a chance to, I had, I got hit so hard cause my brother got murdered during that pregnancy. So I didn't get a chance to concentrate on my pregnancy because I'm dealing with now my brother's death. So it, it, even in that pregnancy, I was like, I asked God, you know, I repented and I renounced and I denounced it. But through that pregnancy, I said, God, why did you take my brother but give me my baby? Like you could have, you could have just not have given me this baby and and kept my brother here on earth. Why would you give me a baby and, and allow my brother to die? So I couldn't concentrate on it. And, and I was just in so much depression because of my brother deaf and me dealing with that. All I could do through my whole pregnancy is say, God, cover my womb because I'm not emotionally and mentally enough stable to carry this baby. So please cover my womb. With my other kids, I literally was like, God, I want Arian to look just like me and be dark skinned. I want my son to, you know what I mean? to have my face. So in case me and his dad are not together, he got to see my face every day. With my other daughter, I was like, you know, I want her to look like, you know, my husband's mom. You know what I mean? I want my husband to be able to see his mother and our daughter. With this with this pregnancy, I couldn't concentrate on what my youngest daughter, Callie, was going to look like, what she was going to sound like. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I don't, you know, all the things that I didn't like about myself, I didn't get a chance to pray and say, God, I don't want her to have this. I want her to have that. You know, because I was going through so much because all I could think about is God you took a life to give me a life like I don't understand this like I don't understand this so me going through that I know I wasn't in a healthy place so all I can say is God cover my wounds so my daughter does not feel what I'm going through cover my wounds so my daughter is not affected by my mental and emotional state please cover my wound with your blood so I began towards the end of her turn to only speak in tongues because I was like if I speak out of my own mouth then I don't want to curse my baby. I don't want to curse this birth. But even as I kept going further and further, and when she said something about the feet being swollen, my feet were swollen so bad. Like I couldn't walk. It got so uncomfortable. And they wouldn't even induce my labor. This doctor that I said, he was like, no, you're going to wait. We're not even going to induce you. The only way we'll induce you is if you two weeks after your due date. So I was like, you're going to make me wait two extra weeks past my due date he said yeah you got to carry over for a term I said that's 42 weeks he said if that's what your body wants to do to process it then we're going to wait on it and I was like what he was like no we got to wait on it so you know that pregnancy I experienced so much but I get so much joy out of Cali I literally didn't have a chance that to, to, to try to manipulate it to ask God what what Cali should look like and she came out so perfect because I even to her name I couldn't even name her and God and it's like God did his you know all my children are beautiful but Callie was just hand selected and crafted by God and it was like because I didn't have any input and the only thing that I could say because of what I was going through was just cover my womb just cover my womb so as we're carrying ladies you don't know what you're carrying but God does and in each time we're carrying it's going to be something different and this is not our last time carrying. As soon as we push this one out, we're going to have to carry again. And each time it's going to teach us something different. And each time the pregnancy is going to be something different. But the only way that we're going to be able to be effective in the kingdom is if we carry it. Because how can we go out and encourage others if we don't adore what we're carrying first? Then we're going to be like what Sharita was talking about, that guy. We're going to be fake and tainted. We got to go through every process of what we're carrying, no matter what the process looks like, no matter if we're throwing up the whole time, no matter if we can barely stand up, no matter, you know what I mean, if it's messing with us mentally, no matter if it's messing with us emotionally, no matter what it is that we're carrying, we got to go through that process because we don't know what we're carrying. And the only way that we're going to be able to be effective in the kingdom in our ministry is if we actually carry it. So that's all I have to say. Carry well, ladies. Carry well. Come on. Amen. Amen. Amen.
a whole word, carry well, carry well, carry well, and do not manipulate, do not manipulate the birth. I love that. Lord, cover our wounds, cover our wounds, cover our spiritual wounds that as we carry that the birthing process will be ordained by you. My God, I'm full tonight. Um, it's a good time to sow. For those of you who uh, want to sow into the word tonight, I pray that you ask the Lord uh, what he desires for you to sow tonight. We want to sow to partner with the word. We're going to read our declaration and then we're going to jump right into sowing. Uh, it is time to sow, sow financially into the word that was released. Sowing allows me to put something in the ground, holding my space of harvest. As God is releasing the harvest for this word, my seed is recognized. If I don't have financial seeds, I sow my faith into the word and I believe that God would do what he says. I receive the anointing on this word. And as I give, I give in faith and not out of obligation. I receive the anointing on this word. And as I give, I give in joy and not in sadness. I receive the anointing on this word. And as I give, I give in celebration and not in doubt. We encourage you to sow from your heart. The amount does not count. Partner with the word of God concerning excellence over our lives. You can do so via Cash App, Dollar Sign Suda Circle, and Zell. The email is below. All right. I'm going to also drop it in the chat for those of you who did not catch the screen. I want to uh, encourage those of you who are um, building something that God is calling you to build. It's not easy. A lot of people have been experiencing a lot of hardship and adversity um, during these times, but I want you, I want to encourage you tonight to hold on, to hold on. And I pray that you were encouraged by tonight's word. I want to welcome some new people that we see here that I have not seen before. And so we do welcome Deandra. I hope I'm saying your name correctly or Deandra. Deandra, if you are, if you can come off a mute, we would love to welcome you. If you can say your name and your business or career and who invited you. Hi, yes, it's Deandra. <laughs> um, Aisha said, I've been on before. It's been like a month. Aisha invited me on tonight. And right now I'm in transition, so I don't have a business, but um, I used to own a daycare center and run a summer camp. And so I'm transitioning and just trying to figure things out. And so long story short, I'm in transition. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. I get it. And you're in the right place. I hope that you were blessed by some word. Um, so good. So good. And is there anything that you would like prayer for, Deandra, that we could support you and partner with you in? Um, I mean, right now I'm just on this faith walk, you know, um, I just have to trust and believe what God did before that he'll do it again, you know, and I, I don't want to feel like, like, I know what I'm, I know the area and the lane I'm supposed to be in, but I don't want to jump into something old. Like that was a business, that was a season, but I know that he wants me to do something new and innovative. And it's just so many different things that I have on my plate that I can just really focus and do what he said, tells me to do in a new way this season. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Even yeah. as you're talking, the Lord showed me a vision of the stone being rolled away. And I heard the words, why are you looking for the living among the dead? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. dead. And so I encourage you that even as you're on this journey, and we're definitely going to pray with you and partner with you concerning this, um, that you don't look for what God is bringing to life among the dead things. And I pray that your, even your, your eyes and your ears will be turned away from the things that are decaying so that the Lord could bring you into the newness of what he's welcoming you into. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you Amen. so much. Um, if you can drop your Instagram um, handle in the chat, we would love to follow you and connect with you as well. Okay. And I want to welcome Tamara. That's my friend. Hi, Tamara. Hi, Bianca. Um, Dan, um, Danny invited me because I started to go to Purpose Life Church. So she told me about it last week. Um, and my style, I guess my business would be considered fashion styling slash I have the gift of um, sewing and designing and sketching. And um, I don't know, I just don't have time. Uh, mom, wife, full-time job in corporate world in healthcare. And three kids, 
Um, so I just have to find time to put myself first when it comes to that. I put myself first when it comes to the scriptures, everything you said tonight aligned with everything that's been part of what God's been depositing in my heart, you know, Matthew six, seeking the kingdom. So aligned with that. And then everything you just spoke about Romans eight, 22 to 25 about the birthing and waiting well. So aligned with that. So I guess my prayer would be the timing of activation. When is the right time to really, and then if the time comes for God to reveal how to go about doing it while managing everything else as a priority in my life. So that's the hardest thing to do. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. All right, so we'll definitely partner with you on that, Tamara. Thank you so much for sharing that. I, I understand that space. Um, and one of the things that I realized about God is that the time is usually now. <laughs> it's just about the organization and what you can do on what level you are in now. And so there's always something that you could do at every level. Um, I always tell my clients that we operate as kingdom CEOs, no matter where we are in the building. If you're on the ground floor or if you're in the penthouse or in between, like there's still a place of operation that you can find. And so um, it can simply just be about you asking the Lord, what what can I do where I am right now, right? Um, what can I do on the level that I'm at? And so we'll definitely be partnering with you. Today. If you could drop your um, Instagram as well in the chat, we would love to follow you. Thank you so much for being here. I also want to welcome, um, I don't know if this is somebody's friend, Jessica. She was on, but I think she just jumped off. Um. If that is your friend, if you invited her, just let me know in the chat so I can reach out to her. Uh, we want to welcome Beatrice. Welcome, welcome. If you can. Hello, hi. Uh, yes, so I was invited by Danny, my longtime high school friend. Um, basically, um, what I'm what I'm doing or in the process of doing, I um create identification cards for children. Um, basically, I target like preschool children, um, elementary elementary school children, um, children that are on the spectrum, um, may have some disabilities and so forth. I provide them with identification cards. That's basically just like a sense of security for them to have. Um, it, you know, it has like their name, their address, their mo their mother's name. It has um, any type of like medical alerts that they may have, whether it be if they have Down syndrome, Down syndrome, sorry, nonverbal and et cetera. So that's the process that I am right in right now. So I'm just trying to, you know, build myself up and get out of being stuck and elevate myself more and you know looking for more clarity within myself to do you know to become better and greater I love in that. what I'm trying to do I love that thank you so much for being here um that's definitely a an untapped industry as well so thank you for that and the work that you do in that um is there anything that you would like for us to partner with you in prayer concerning um just to pray for clarity and patience, <laughs> you know, just to, you know, have a, a clear and sound mind to get me past whatever is blocking me, whatever is holding me back to just, you know, allow the Lord to just help me to see more than just what's in front of me. Love it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you so much, Beatrice. And if you have Instagram, if you drop your um, handle in the chat, we would love to follow with you. I will. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. We want to welcome Jarena. Jarena's my friend. Hi, Jarena. Hey, hey. Good evening. Sorry for coming so late, but what I got was still very filling. Um, Jarena Jade, um, thank you, Bianca, for sharing this uh space. Um, though I'm so happy you have it. Um I I don't know. I I I have an interesting work. Set up. I need to just basically redo it. And I keep getting these ideas and I keep writing them down, but they keep changing. And so I'm like, okay, I need some clarity on this. Um, 
on like what I need to do and what it needs to look like um, and really have it kingdom focused, uh, but but not like but not like performative kingdom focus, but actually doing the work. Um, so like really trying to figure that out. Um, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> and uh, Jarena is a storyteller, right? She tells yes. amazing stories. Thank you. Yes. And she's a host. I'm I'm telling them all your business. She moderates and hosts and things of that nature. And so she's amazing. Yes, exactly. Um, and anything that you would like partnership and prayer with, Jarena? Clarity, um, that I'll receive clarity, that I have consistency, commitment. Um, yeah, I think that's that those are the two C words, consistency and commitment. Um, and to see an execution, seeing things through. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And please do drop your um handle in the chat so we can follow you and follow what you Thank you so much for being here. And Jessica came back. Hi, Jessica. I'm sorry. I'm Hello. So I know that she invited you. Um, what type, type of business or career are you in? So I am a student career program specialist. So basically, I create programs for professional development and to expose John Jay students into experiential learning opportunities. I just completed my master in industrial organizational psychology, and I was looking to venture into corporate consulting. Okay. Yes. John Jay is my college. <laughs> awesome. And um, I can part with you here as well. I'm sorry. I didn't hear that. What you said? Sorry. How can we partner with you in prayer concerning anything that you've been believing God for? So um, I just want doors to be opened in my current place of work. I want consistency for me and just clarity and direction as to where, you know, where to start, whether it's my time now to start venturing into the corporate or is there more skill sets that I have to learn in my current workplace, just pretty much direction and vision, I guess, and clarity. Okay, awesome. Will do. Thank you so much for being here. I pray that you were blessed. Thank you. Thank you. All right, did I miss anyone? I feel like I got everybody else. If I missed anybody, let me know. Um, this was absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Um, God is doing amazing things. Let's just keep our eyes open um, to what is happening around us and do not lose uh hope oh ashley ashley i didn't know which ashley it was we have so many ashley's i'm like is this my cousin is this ashley cruz i don't know hi ashley <laughs> you can unmute if you can did anybody invite ashley is this a different ashley i don't know i feel like i've done this i've done this before and it was no Nobody, Ashley, nobody, nobody. Okay. Yeah, I know she's been here before. Yeah. Okay. All right. Perfect. Um, For everybody who came here for the first time, thank you again for being here. Um, I'm definitely going to reach out to you so that we can get you connected and acclimated and what we have going on here in the Suda Circle. And I pray that um, as you get connected, that the Lord will begin to show you exactly where you need to be and give you the clarity that you need and the direction that you need for your business, for your life. We're pretty dope over here, not to toot our own horn, but we're a really dope community. I love these ladies. And there's so many more ladies that um, you have the ability to get connected to. And so thanks for being here. All right, we're done tonight. Did I miss anything? Oh, our walk, June 10th. Our date was changed because the rain rained on our parade, but the Lord does everything well and he's perfect in all of his ways. So June 10th, if you guys have not registered for the walk, um, make sure that you go on our website, www.womanunderoneroof.com and make sure you go sign up for a team. We have a lot of teams that you could be a part of. Sign up, join us on June 10th in Brooklyn for the walk and we'll see you guys next Tuesday. Bye.